North Carolina's ferry system provides a vital transportation link for residents and visitors to the state's barrier islands. The ferries provide transportation to the mainland, emergency evacuation, and even a tourist attraction. Trouble is, Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate, and we're not talking about the wind and waves above the water. Currents on the bottom, pushed by those same winds and waves, fill in the channels with sediment. It's called shoaling. The North Carolina Department of Transportation has to maintain all of its channels for the ferry system. And in many places, these channels fill in naturally with sediment that's transported into them. And in order to do so, they have to dredge them out. And when they dredge them out, they're removing the, channel, removing the material from the channel, deepening it, um, keeping it so it's of a size and dimension that it can accommodate their ferries. The ferries require channels roughly 80 feet wide and 8 feet deep to travel safely along the outer banks, but the natural depth of Pamlico Sound is only about 4 feet. That means there's quite a bit of sediment to move. For years, that dredge material was considered a waste material. In fact, the term for it was dredge spoils, and it was dumped pretty much anywhere. But at a time when storms are getting stronger and sea levels are rising, that dredged material is now considered a valuable commodity. The emergency ferry runs from Stumpy Point across Pamlico Sound to Rodanthe. Right, so the ferry channel that we're referring to is basically in the heart of Rodanthe. So the North Carolina Department of Transportation is teaming up with the University of North Carolina Coastal Studies Institute to study how dredge material from that emergency ferry channel can be made an asset and not a spoil. Since dredging to keep ferry routes and shipping lanes open is a fact of life on the coast, the findings could clear the way for a new dredging plan. Material you're producing can be an important resource. You don't want to just willy-nilly go out there, dig and dump, right? We want to do it smart, right? And the best way to protect the environment, as well as provide something that's needed for the residents, for DOT, for everybody that works out there. But to do that, scientists must understand all aspects of the ferry channel. We're able to take a really comprehensive look at how the ecosystem function may be affected by the dredging activity and then how we can minimize any potential negative effects and at the same time maximizing the positive effects as we figure out what clever things to do with the dredge material. Researchers mapped the bottom of Pamlico Sound, creating a profile of the channel's location as well as the shoals across the channel. Ready? Yeah. The makeup of the sediment is also studied so are the currents and the waves in the sound, as well as the tides. It's not enough to know what's on the bottom. It's also important to know how the sediment gets moved around. The study also looked at the history of the area. The proposal is to widen and deepen a channel, and there's the potential there for there to be something uh, buried, because you know the historical picture is imperfect or incomplete. If there's something there, then we want to know about it. And then also there's the potential in this particular project for the deposition of the, the dredge material. And you want to make sure that when you're dumping it, you're not inadvertently obscuring something that could be of cultural importance. And then there's the seagrass. Seagrass provides tons and tons of ecosystem function and has values to people because it, provi it provides fish, it stabilizes sediments. By consolidating the sediments, it maintains water quality. So if you were to cover it up, you probably would see a material decline in ecosystem function in that area. So the idea of this project is to be as thoughtful as we can about where we put the material. Those options include building new islands to create areas for oyster reefs and marsh habitat, stabilizing eroding shorelines, and creating new wetlands for natural storm protection. And it all has to be economical. So we want to look for an area that, that can, can sort of serve all those purposes, right? Environmentally be sound, maybe create some new habitat, maybe protect some shoreline, or at least do some of those and not cost the taxpayers an exorbitant amount of money.